Great. Hi everyone. Hope you had a great, uh, great week, and uh, hope you have an even better Friday. Uh, and uh, happy to see you joining in on our lunch and learn um, today. Uh, we will speak more about the new marketing mix uh, for for e-commerce and retail companies, and how you can combine both Google Ads and uh, referral marketing. So uh, super happy to to have you all joining. So uh, I'm Jonas from uh, from Keywordio and uh, happy to be here with Victor today. Yeah, uh, same. We uh, it's always fun doing these things and and uh, especially with you guys. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's get it started. Yes. So let's uh, let's have a look at the agenda. Uh, so I will start uh, giving you a brief on on Google Ads and shopping and what we see really is key to be successful both for e-commerce and for retail company. 2020. Uh, then Victor will continue and tell you all about referral marketing and how you can use that. And uh, then we will wrap up with uh, a new marketing mix for how you can combine both Google Ads and shopping with referral marketing in a, in a new efficient way to, to get even more out for, for the combination. And I think that's really the interesting part, uh, combining these two different um, channels or, or ways of working into uh, the same marketing mix. Yeah. Yes. Cool. So uh, let's start. So Google Ads and, and shopping. <clears throat> so why is it today we have more technology than we ever had and uh, we have better solutions? So it should be really simple to, to run e-commerce. So like it is today, the only thing you actually need to do to be successful in running e-commerce and, and retail is that First, you need to you need to find your your customers exactly when they need your product. So uh, this is this is me, you know, middle aged man uh, on the bike, realizing, hey, I need to buy protein powder, and I <laughs> actually don't even know if I really need to to buy that, honestly. But you know, suddenly it was important to buy that, and I need to buy it on like instantly. And then after when when I've done the purchase, you just need to you know instant super impress me and be extremely fast on, on delivering that so really take me on that extraordinary customer journey and then the third thing the only thing you need to figure about then is to actually figure out writing all the speeches that you that you have to give when you take award all your awards so it's really simple right yeah yeah what could possibly go wrong yeah <laughs> and I guess you, Victor, you've been an e-commerce entrepreneur for, for a long time. You really know that the reality is, is far from, from this easy. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, the complexity is, is, of course, much, much greater than that. Yeah. So this is really more about what we're looking in today. Like, why is this so hard to, to do in an efficient way? Uh, because it's really hard. Even with all the technology and we have all of this, uh, there are a couple of reasons why it's so hard. So competition is, is fierce. A lot of people see that, hey, other people are doing this great, so we would like to, to get in this game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the complexity when we have more technology and more channels to choose from, from than ever, this is also part of adding on the complexity in, in how to solve this. So when it comes to Google Ads, it's really, you can, you can simplify it to, to this example here. So really, what is the difference between these two searches? So look at, for example, a person that is searching for Nike Air Max. And then you look at the search by black Nike Air Max. And, and what is really the difference between these two searches? So the difference is really, what is the question? Uh, because there is a person behind every query, uh, or at least most of the queries. Mm. Uh, and, and the point is really how can you as a marketer understand the person behind the query uh, better? That is really the, the question you should ask. And the better you understand the question that you ask, then of course you, you can be better understanding how you can solve that problem for, for your customers. So on the first example, buy black Nike Air Max, the, prob the real question behind that query is probably something like, I want to buy Nike Air Max, What's the price for it? And how fast can I get them delivered? Um, that's probably more of the question that you're asking behind that query. And compare that to, to the first one. So Nike Air Max could even be a one person that thinks like, 
Was it Air Max that Barack Obama used? Yeah. Um, or maybe I'm just looking for a picture of a pair of Air Max to send to a friend to explain them what type of brand of shoes I'm wearing. Or yeah, there are so many different possibilities to that query. Yeah. Like what the actual intent is. Yeah. But there's no reason if you're you're in e-commerce or retail, start buying these queries because you will never get you in a sale at all. Uh, so it's really really the key here to to get an option to sort away these these queries that doesn't have any intent at all uh, that you are interested about. So, of course, the best way in the world would be to sit by every person who is doing a query and ask them, okay, what do you think about? And then try to, to understand that. But that's going to be hard, right? So you have three different options where you can really understand this query. Uh, and here are the three options. So first is really try to understand who is asking uh, the search engine, um, like what age, gender, location, and the typical demographics. And you can also look into more advanced signals as well, like virtual status, education level, or even home ownership on some countries. So, so with that, you can probably know more about the person asking the question. Then you can, of course, look at the search query itself and, and think about is it, for example, all the search queries that has a buy in front of them? Probably people want to buy things, right? So, so that is something that, that you know. Or is it just one word or is it three words? Then you can learn a lot from, from that. And start asking you the question like, what is the behavior I see from uh, my most valuable customers? How are they searching for our products? And, and, and how do you, do you find them? So start looking into that. And if you're not running Google Ads, yourself or you have an agency that does it for you start asking them these questions and make them uh, dig into the data so you actually can learn more about this and and of course optimize for it and then the third option is also that start understanding the behavior your most valuable customers has on your site so really uh, how can you build audience lists based on certain types of behavior so you can really focusing on getting more of these people in and if you're extremely good on all of these three areas, understand who, understand the search query, and also the behavior on site, I can guarantee you that we will be much more efficient on, on running mm. your, your ads. So then it comes down to, to your products, right? Uh, and um, I guess you have a lot of products, many of you. Uh, you have many different brands, categories, and and you have a lot of different challenges on on, uh, on on all of them. But for example here, let's take this ex example. So the products on the top two shelves here, uh, the problem we have here is that the margin is too low. It is just too low. So we cannot make a uh, return on ad spend that is good enough to actually start advertising for, for these products. But maybe they can be used as added the products to increase basket size or, or something like that, but they should probably not be uh, running on Google Ads or Google Shopping, for example. So it's also really key that the person that run Google Ads or Google Shopping for you has the deep business understanding because it is not just about clicking and, and, and setting targets in, in Google Ads. It's a lot about actually understand the business behind it. And then we can have another examples. So for example, if you have products with, uh, with a very low price, uh, you probably also have uh, challenges to find a profitable way to run Google Shopping, for example. So maybe these products should be bundled together and offered as a package. And that has nothing to do with, with Google Ads or Google Shopping. That is just about, okay, how are we experiment on, on selling the products? Mm. And, um, and I guess, Victor, when you were uh, an e-commerce uh, CEO, I guess you were really on top of, of understanding the assortment, but... Uh, oh, trying at least. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's always hard and it is complex, um, but if you treat all the products the same, uh, disregarding margin and, and um, how, how much they actually... Uh, the margin both in percentages and in, in, uh, in the money value, uh, you will get lost. Yeah. Uh, so it, it really needs to be taken into account, of course. Yeah, yeah. 
So the first recommendation we, we have for today is really if you haven't started experimenting on in-market uh, audience list, uh, you should probably do it. So these lists are, are um, uh, built by Google. Uh, so they look at a lot of different behaviors on site, uh, a lot of different search queries, and then they set up uh, different types of lists for uh, people where they see that they are in market to buy. So for example, this list, if, you, if you're selling apparel and accessories, then you should definitely have a look at this list and see if this is something that, that you can use because this is Google's way of, of uh, trying to look at a lot of different search queries and behaviors and, and condense that down to, to audience lists for you. So how do you implement them? First, well, you just go into audience and then you have uh, audience insights in Google Ads. You can just uh, look at the different list and then you will also be able to see like, does it make sense for, for me to, to have this uh, audience list? Mm. And um, yeah, it's super easy to try. Just uh, pick your ad group that you would like to try it for and, and uh, test it and uh, make sure that you, you time box the experiment. So, uh, okay, didn't happen anything after one day. No, that's probably not gonna be the case, but have a clear idea of how much time you need to spend to see uh, if it's a successful experiment. So we had a, a really interesting return on ad spend problem, uh, and it was, uh, due to part of uh, that uh, Google Shopping is getting very, very competitive in many markets and, and segments. Um, and uh, due to high uh, cost per click, um, we had segments for one client where we had a really low return on ad spend for us of two and, and the target was, um, yeah, was, uh, was higher. Uh, so we needed to do something. Um, so what we did was we started to identify what products were actually having these problems. And the point one here is really always make sure that you identify the problem in the detail. So you should probably segment out maybe on uh, price uh, per product, maybe on margins, could be lifetime value, category or brand. So you really understand the problem. And we found out in this case that we had problems with products that were priced uh, below 100 USD. Mm. Um, that were the, the problem. And then we build, since we are using a lot of technology, uh, we build a lot of different types of audience lists and we started to experiment. And we actually managed to increase the ROAS on this uh, product segment, going from a ROAS 2 to a ROAS of 6, which is just amazing. And, and that is just making sure that the right people see the ads uh, and, uh, and really uh, work in detail to understand the core problem here and then use technology just to be fast on experiment with a lot of different uh, audience list uh, and not sitting and click around manually and test. Uh, so the, the third thing is really to set clear expectations on how long can I wait for this experiment and what is the outcome that I will uh, see as a success. Yeah. So what you're really getting at here, which I think is key and very important, is like all customers are not um, to be treated equally mm. in terms of ad spend, in terms of targeting. Yeah. Uh, and it all, all comes back to the fact that, you know, behind every query there's a person yeah. and different people will have um, totally different demographics. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, uh, and I think uh, the fun part is really to combine the the business understanding combining that with with google ads and technology that is really where where we can see they have the big impact yeah. so uh, these are also three recommendations that we recommend you to you know if you're not running ads yourself like make sure that you you continuously experiment with uh, these audience lists and run remarketing on them um so abandoned cart experiment with different timelines so okay this user they abandoned the cart for uh, maybe zero to five days ago, five to 10 days ago, and then you put up different segments. Uh, and this is what, for, for us, we are doing this with software uh, and the API integration to Google Ads. So we could just launch uh, a very high number of uh, audience lists at the same time and then evaluate based on the data, mm. uh, which is of course more efficient than sitting in and doing the experiment manually. 
I also think that you should look into the the um, audience list that you create in, in analytics for session quality, uh, which is a measurement on on uh, what Google perceives as a person that has an intent of, of buying. So uh, look at session quality and see if you can find out interesting uh, audience on that. And also the what I mentioned, the in-market audience list, uh, it's probably also gonna be interesting to, to play around with. So let's look more into Google Shopping. Um, and Google Shopping, since you don't use keywords for Google Shopping, uh, you have a couple of other features that's gonna be really interesting. So looking at the same query here, Nike Air Max, for example, again, and uh, since the Google Shopping is triggered by the, the feed, the product feed that you have, uh, that is really the key here. Um, but what you can do is that many people work with the negative keywords to cut away the traffic that doesn't make sense. Um, that you, you see it doesn't work, right? And the key is really the more specific and the better you can be with the, with the title from the start, uh, of course, the easier it will be for, for you that you don't need to clean up as much with, with the negative keywords afterwards if you have a really good uh, product title. And it's not about writing a beautiful title that uh, because it's most of the time you're gonna be cropped like, like this one you see here. Uh, so this is what we recommend for how you should set your, your titles. Make sure that you have the brand, product, category, and attributes. And depending on what, what segment you are in, uh, of course, you should mix these around. Yes, if you're selling books, for example, you have completely different setup compared to if you're a, a telco company. Uh, so make sure that you find out what is really working for, for your segment. And these are the, the product titles that we recommend for, for some of the biggest uh, e-commerce and, and retail segments. So for example, the electronics uh, that I mentioned, if you're selling TV, you know, brand attribute, product category, and then model. So Samsung 88 inch smart LED TV, 4K 3D curve. There is a lot of information there and also the product um, uh, description as well, the model itself. Uh, make sure that you really work uh, and improve the titles uh, on Google Shopping because they are going to be key for making sure that you drive the right traffic to, uh, to your site. So we are really proud on seeing results like this. Uh, so for example, Let's Deal is one of the leading marketplaces for time limited offers in, in Scandinavia. Uh, they have a lot of different uh products and, and offers all the time uh, so you need to be really fast on, on on making updates all the time and they had a challenge where they were focusing on getting the uh, revenue from new customers uh coming in and with the way of applying technology to do this kind of optimization at scale mm. we managed to to grow the revenue from new customers with 320 percent year over year and at the same time actually increase the profitability from Google Ads and Shopping with 27%, uh, which is just amazing. We're super proud of, of, of these numbers. Um, but this is really the kind of effect you can see when, when you manage to uh, find these kind of uh, things. So just to summarize what we do at Keywordio, we, we build AI technology that is custom built for, for e-commerce on top of Google Ads to make sure that things that are that shouldn't be done manually, uh, that that is done uh, at scale uh, and uh, with logic for it. And the second part that is, I would say, equally important, it's also what we want to spend more time on is actually understand our customer's business, which is the business intelligence part. Like if we have a problem with a, a product segment, like we talked about earlier with mm. like 100 US dollar, then the problem should be solved on those products, not on all the products in the Google Shopping. Uh, because like throwing all the products just into one Google Shopping category and trying to, to fix everything at once, that's not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna be- Well, it works if you're only selling one product. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's really what we do and, and how we make the impact for, for our customers. So with that, I would like to hand over the word to, to Victor and uh, let's talk some more about referral marketing. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Victor, uh, as previously stated. Uh, I'm 
CEO of a company called Redeal, and uh, we help um, e-commerce and omnichannel retail clients with uh, referral marketing. Um, and uh, for those who are, may not um, be familiar with the term, um, referral marketing is simply um, having your customers do the marketing for you. And this already happens for all customers, whether you have a program or a strategy for it or not. Uh, and it's based on, on a simple fact. We trust the people we know and our friends and our family more than anything else. Um, if surveys done uh, on the American market shows that the number one um, buying decision um, factor is recommendations from people I trust, from people I know. On second place is recommendations from people I don't know. Uh, and then comes all forms of paid advertising. So um, getting recommendations and referrals uh, for any company in any business is very, very important. Uh, the only problem if you just let this happen organically is that, first of all, it doesn't happen often enough. Um, maybe only a few of your, the customers who actually appreciate your brand and your business will actively talk to their friends about it. And also you have the factor that a dissatisfied customer is much more likely to, to talk about it than a satisfied customer. So what we're trying to do at scale through our platform is uh, helping our clients get their satisfied customers to spread the word. Um, and the key here is the personal component. Uh, so first of all, we want to encourage sharing, especially from customers who had a good experience. So we, we try to take a satisfied customer and we encourage them to, to become an ambassador for the brand or for the business uh, by recommending uh, the business and sharing an offer um, with their friends. In order to do this, there are multiple channels to choose from. And the key ingredient here is really that in order for this message, for this recommendation to feel uh, genuine and to, to be perceived as an actual personal recommendation, um, the sender is not the brand or the business, and it's certainly not Redeal. It has to be perceived as, as, as my actual friend sending it to me through one of the channels that we normally use to, to communicate. So say, for example, me and Jonas, we're good friends. We use uh, WhatsApp to communicate all the time. If he gets recommendations from me through email, that won't be, feel very natural. Uh, he'll want to get it in the same uh, channel that we normally use to communicate. So we're constantly trying to incorporate new channels um, and we're really excited to have released both Messenger, WhatsApp uh, and Direct Link um, pretty recently. I think that's a really strong case because like I said, it needs to feel like there's a natural channel that we would use, right? Because yeah. then it's just obvious that it would be off if you were sending in, in some other channel. Well, then it just per, then it's just perceived as another form of paid advertising. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and this will also be like, in my view, from a consumer perspective, uh, problematic because I never opted in to any communication from this company. Uh, but it will be natural if one of my friends or one of my family members uh, sends me something. Mm. Um, so, so, um, and, and that really drives a lot of um, engagement, um, click-through rates, read rates. Uh, all of the numbers are much higher when it's perceived as a personal message from, from someone I actually know and trust. Uh, which is basically um, this picture. Um, Jonas, if I send a recommendation to him, he will, uh, through any channel, he will get it um, from me. And then we're incentivizing in order to get the referral rate up. We're incentivizing uh, the ambassador as well, of course, with an offer of their own or with uh, some kind of incentive to, to actually uh, follow through and send the recommendation. And this can be done simply for sharing, where I'm rewarded just for making a recommendation. Mm -hmm. It can also be done uh, through uh, different uh, stages. For example, Jonas maybe has to, to visit the client's website in order for me as an ambassador to be rewarded or even become a customer. Mm -hmm. And this can be all be tied to different type of offers or rewards. So what we're doing here is really uh, creating, um, on a personal level, a discussion about a brand and a business between two friends which really also creates not only new customers and, and more loyal customers, uh, but it also creates a, a high level of brand awareness, uh, which affects um, the buying process a lot. We can do this at different stages of the buying cycle. 
Um, a lot of our clients, they use it in the, uh, as a, our, our checkout solution, which is called Redeal Instant, which triggers the referral flow right after a purchase has been made. But you can also use um, our platform to, to uh, service uh, newsletters, um, on-site actions, for example, visiting a specific landing page or exit intent or, or um, idling in the cart, etc. And we're also excited to have a feature now that, that um, is dedicated to omnichannel businesses where we're uh, combining uh, the offline and online space. So the results of this is, is, of course, a lot depending on what type of client we're helping and what type of business they're in. But typically we see that about 10 to 20 percent of, of customers that are offered um, to make a referral choose to do so. Uh, on average, they send to 1.4 friends. Um, the offers um, distributed have a pretty high conversion rate, 6.5% on average, um, which in the end leads to an, an average uh, return on advertisement spend in our channels for, for uh, exceeding 12 times, uh, which I think is really competitive. Mm. So I want to look at a little bit at what we're doing now and, and the theme of, of uh, this webinar. Yeah. Um, because um, Redeal has been around for a while, Google Ads has certainly been around for a while, uh, but we're not, w what we're now doing uh, together with uh, an incubator pro program with Google and also with you guys at Keywordio is using the behavior from our customers through the referral flow and servicing this as a possible audience in Google Ads, <coughs> uh, which is really exciting because if someone acts as an ambassador, we know that they have a high level of engagement or a higher than average level of engagement to our brand. And we can also uh, see the friends that have come through a personal recommendation and put them in a specific audience, which means that even if I send a personal recommendation to Jonas about a business, he visits the website, uh, it's not certain that he will convert to a customer right away, right? But by building audiences in Google Ads, we will now be able to um, direct remarketing campaigns, um, knowing that Jonas has actually received a personal recommendation from someone that he trusts mm -hmm. and is probably much more likely to convert than your average visitor. So by combining these things, uh, we're really adding a layer uh, to the audience um, possibilities that I think is really interesting. Um, and through the omnichannel um, perspective, we can now start uh, a referral campaign through scanning a QR code in a physical store and we can distribute uh, the, 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 the rewards to the ambassadors and the offers to the friends both as discount codes to be used on a website but also as barcodes that can be shown in any cash register and, and um, used at a physical location. So uh, this in combination with the Google Ads connection, I think uh, opens up a lot of really interesting possibilities for, for uh, targeting your audiences. Definitely, definitely. So, um, and I think it's really interesting. So, so if we take an example, and, and I, think this is a, I think this is a good example of, of um, quite uh, uh, standard uh, funnel. Uh, you typically use Google Ads uh, or shopping to drive inlet flow of uh, new visitors to, to your site. Uh, then you're continuously working with the optimization of, of your pages uh, to take the customers or the prospect through the consideration phase. And then of course, when it comes down to when they're gonna make the purchase decision, mm. it is about being, you know, the super simple checkout, uh, fast delivery. And of course, you're loyal customers, you're working with like newsletter delivery and, and you have a lot of different features in, in here. But what we really see with this new way of, of, uh, of marketing mix is to, to feed more and more of the insights that, that for example, you acquire later in the funnel uh, yeah. with Redeal and to feed them upstreams and automatically integrate them in decisions, for example, regarding uh, Google Ads and shopping uh, or how audience and, and remarketing is, is done. And that is something that, that we see is really, really powerful. Yeah. Uh, and it's also like, so for example, let's say that you're running uh, shopping uh, and you have a certain types of, of products that you are aiming for, for a certain type of return on ad spend, for example. And then you you start working with Redeal and you see that, yeah, we are actually getting 
a lot more revenue in here as well and the competition is going up then you probably have uh, more room to actually uh, be a bit more aggressive if these customers prove really really valuable for you so you can not only work with the audience but you can also work and and uh, uh, lowering your robust target to be more aggressive and uh, and make sure that you beat the competition in a mm. way that uh, yeah they they don't even understand what what you're opti optimizing for and I think that's a, a really really promising thing yeah yeah we're really excited to, to be able to incorporate all of these things together yeah um, because I, I and I think it's you cannot be stressed enough that uh, it's often viewed as you have different stages in your funnel and it's kind of a in your head it becomes a linear process mm. when it's really not it's it's more of a circle yeah. uh, where all of the different stages affect each other uh, and especially if we can build a feedback loop uh, to become more efficient at the top of the funnel by by analyzing and and automatically um, following behavior at later stages in the funnel um, everything can get that much more efficient mm -hmm. And can you can you share some more insights about the products, for example, in the consideration phase, the Redeal Action and also Redeal Instant? Like what uh, what is that and why is it important? Absolutely. Well, so so our platform, uh, the referral uh, part of it, can can be used uh, at different stages of the buying cycle to acquire different um, type of results. So if we're looking at Redeal Instant, for example, that that automatically pops up at the order confirmation page asking your customer to make a referral in order to get reach their friends to get new customers but mm. also give them an incentive to come back and shop again with mm. using their the reward their offer then we're really trying to drive loyalty with your existing customer yep. as well as reaching new ones uh, but you can also use for example an on-site um, campaign that is before the purchase is even made uh, it could be a clickable banner it could be some other type of um, event on your website and then it's not about as much driving loyalty but driving the purchase then it's more of a um, um, drive, driving conversion rate mm. uh, as well as reaching friends and, and new possible clients mm. and the final one the reveal target for the already loyal customers yeah I would say that you know they may be loyal or not but at least you have uh, you're able to contact them you probably yeah. have them on your newsletter or they're following you on social media um, then you can post a campaign uh, through a social media post or, or by sending a newsletter to your clients asking them to hey we're, we're willing to offer you this if you tell your friends about our company uh, and then we're really trying to start a, a new buying process so then we're moving back up to the top of the funnel again saying hey um, we want you to come back and shop with us and we also want you to, to uh, tell your friends um, and and all of these uh, individually can of course use this um, integration with, with Google's API that we're building um, to, to manually feed the audiences which is I guess important information for, for you guys as well when you're optimizing bids for ads or, or um, doing remarketing campaigns and such yeah definitely definitely and I think also to to explain that we we have this integration ready between keyword and, and redeal uh, and if you're interested to, to test this out you just reach out to to anyone on, on the redeal side or the keyword side and we will be happy to to have you set up to to really make sure to get this feedback loop going and to yeah. make sure that you you have a continuous way to learn and to optimize uh, how we run this uh, channel uh, because it is uh, it's a great combination uh, to combine both finding the new customers with the referral marketing yeah yeah i think it's um, very promising and, and uh, super exciting actually and, and it's i think it's so important to view your marketing channels as a mix yeah. not as different separate channels to be treated separately but uh, having them work in cooperation with each other Cool. So with that, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. And a nice weekend. Yes. Cool. Thank you for listening.